All right, so this is the first version of the ungated manifesto. There's a pattern that I want to call out. It's a pattern that is destroying not only our ability to live a good life, but it's destroying the soul of the internet. It's destroying our ability to reach our potential and to be the people that we want to be and to fix problems in a complex world. I first noticed it when I was writing for a filmmaking website, or a blog, I should say, back in the day, in 2014. And I made my entire living from this place for about three years. And it was really great at first to be able to make my living as a writer, doing independent work on the internet, writing about things that I was excited about at the time, um, in my case, filmmaking. But the thing about this blog, and this is true of basically all blogs in, you know, like the early, like mid 2000s um, and into the 2010s, is that they were driven by traffic. They relied on advertising in order to be a successful business. And as contracted writers, our livelihood depended on our ability to drive traffic, to generate page views. Like we were literally paid by that. Not We weren't employees. We didn't have a salary. We only got paid if we wrote a lot of things and those things generated a lot of traffic. That was the game that we were playing. So the way we did that was um, not writing interesting original stuff, but through aggregation and through being kind of clickbaiters. So instead of, you know, spending our days like interviewing people and doing thoughtful, interesting, original work, we instead scoured this ecosystem, the digital ecosystem of other filmmaking blogs and photography blogs and YouTube channels and podcasts, people talking about gear, people talking about craft, like this entire ecosystem. And when we stumbled across something that had potential for generating traffic for us, we would aggregate it. So that means we would take the thing, we would summarize it a little bit in our, in our own words. Maybe we would add in a little bit of opinion or context or sometimes blend different sources together, but generally not. And then we would wrap it all up in a clickbait bow. We would give it a headline designed to grab attention publish it, and then fire it off to our hundreds of thousands of Facebook followers, because that's how media companies drove traffic in the 2010s, was by publishing a lot on Facebook. And frankly, we did this multiple times a day, just sort of aggregating other people's content and putting our own little spin on it. And we did that for years. And to my knowledge, this thing was a money printing machine. And, you know, for me, it was easy work. And towards the end, it was not only easy, but increasingly lucrative. Um, you know, I could work like 10 to 20 hours a week and more than pay for anything that I really wanted to do, which again, it's pretty fucking awesome. But the pattern that I noticed is that I eventually got bored. And this is when I really first started noticing it. Like, after you've written like the same generic article about how some new camera is going to, you know, revolutionize the world of cinematography for the thousandth time, like it literally felt like that, just writing the same thing over and over and over. But like intuitively, I got bored. I got to this place where it's like, I don't, like I need to explore intellectually and creatively and really get deeper into these topics that I, that I care about and that I'm curious about. So for me, that was, you know, things like the, like the craft of cinematography, getting really deep into this sort of like emergent combination of light and shadow and camera movement and color and all of these different things that constitute cinematography. Like it's a really beautiful art form. I wanted to get deeper into that. I wanted to get into the, the psychology of creativity and how we could show up more fully in the world and like hone our voice and all these things, right? And so I, I tried it a few times. I tried to do 
interesting work. And every single time, the lesson that I learned was that things that are a little bit different, things that are a little bit more thoughtful and nuanced and long form, generally didn't generate traffic. I mean, sometimes they did, but it was way more hit or miss. Um, and on account of the fact that they took more time, it just wasn't really worth it. And I remember one particular instance where I spent like 25 to 30 hours on this long form written interview with a Hollywood editor, somebody who had just done the editing for a big blockbuster film that was coming out. We got into his his like upbringing, how he learned the craft, how he how he broke into the industry, even though he'd never gone to film school, like all of these really interesting things. And then we talked about the craft and the mechanics of editing and all of the aesthetic choices he had made. And it was really good. I was so proud of it. And then it flopped once it was published. Barely anybody read this thing. And that was the moment it really hit me when I started feeling just kind of perennially hopeless and really cynical about the work that I was doing, about the, my place in the world, about my ability to support myself with work I cared about and all of that. Like that one instance was sort of like the, like the one crack that just broke the dam wide open and, and led me, yeah, that led me to feel, um, yeah, just kind of broken and hopeless and cynical. Like it just wasn't worth it to listen to my intuition and try to do interesting, good work. You know, I had student loans to pay off. I had an expensive apartment in Denver. I was, um, yeah, I just like the economic incentives were what they were. And I had to keep doing what I knew would pay off. Right. But it wasn't, it wasn't just like the personal hopelessness that I felt. It was the cynicism that I began to see throughout the entire media ecosystem. Because again, as aggregators, our job was to like have an eagle eye and keep track on this entire corner of the internet. Like every little, every little blog, every little podcast, all of these YouTube channels, we watched it like through RSS feeds and all of these various ways that we could really keep track of everything going on. And after you've been doing this a while, you notice that everybody is playing the same kind of cynical bottom of the barrel aggregation game. You notice that pretty much everybody is avoiding interesting, thoughtful, like deep dive content that really gets to the core of something important. And it's kind of disappointing because like me, like I was also a consumer of filmmaking content. Like that was the filmmaking phase of my life when I felt this desire to create deeper stuff myself and I wanted to consume deeper stuff myself. But it just really wasn't there. Although sometimes, like on rare occasion, it did show up. Somebody did something that was really interesting or unique or original something that was really thoughtful and well-crafted and done. And like the funny thing is, is that thoughtful original content would rocket through the aggregation ecosystem. Like it got a lot of attention and it very often turned whoever this person was who went out on a limb to create something good. It kind of, it's kind of turned them into a, like a little micro celebrity. And the funny thing is, and like this is this is part of the pattern, right? The pattern that I'm talking about is that very often those people who started and who got, like who got their start by doing good work, eventually the quality just trailed off. They started playing the cynical games, giving people just like the basics of what they want instead of producing work that that really lit them up. And you could tell. Like so even the people who who experienced firsthand how powerful it was to be original and to be thoughtful. This pattern, these incentives in this ecosystem eventually crushed them as well. And it was really sad to see as a, as a consumer, like people you really looked up to, people you thought were on the cutting edge of great work, eventually just get sucked into mediocrity, right? 
And so that was that was what led me to start my first business, right? That was what what finally convinced me that something had to be better. Like I would rather be poor and struggling on hard work, um, like hard, meaningful, interesting work than um, than just chipping away on this like really soulless blog, being an aggregator, being you know, being somebody who contributes basically no value to the internet. Like it, it just wasn't acceptable to me anymore. And so that's when I jumped into the marketing world, right? I started doing some freelance marketing. I built my own website, my own online business. And sure enough, I noticed the exact same patterns of economic incentives of mimicking the people around me because I wanted to be successful. Like I saw all of the successful people doing a specific thing. And then there's that part of our, our psyche that wants some semblance of certainty, that wants to feel like we're in control. So we then do that and the pattern just repeats itself. So in the marketing world, it's... You know, it's, it's best practices. It's the same bottom of the barrel, like, here's how you go viral or, or whatever, right? It's just people trotting out like really trite cliches as opposed to getting into like, like marketing psychology is fascinating. Like what it takes to actually build relationships and get somebody's attention and, and tap into various parts of their identity and worldview. That stuff is is really, really intriguing, and you can go way far down the rabbit hole with it, but it's easier to just be like, find your niche, find, you know, <laughs> add value is the one that drives me crazy. Um, and there's like so many of these little slogans that have have sort of like caught on that people just mindlessly repeat and don't really ever dig beneath the surface to figure out what's there. And so I noticed it there. And then I, I, I also noticed it in the actual film community, not just not like people talking about filmmaking, but people talking about or like people actually making films. It turns out the vast majority of indie films that are released are pretty generic. They all fit into the same little like handful of genres. They generally all have the, you know, they're they come from like the same handful of like screenwriting books. Like you can tell like the certain types of plot points. You can tell the certain types of characters. Um, they all kind of have a certain aesthetic to them. And they're all sort of uh, the same after you've seen a few of them. And it was really, I don't know, that was really disheartening to me because I, I came into indie filmmaking thinking that was where people took risks. That was where people did really interesting kind of out there work that wouldn't ever be able to exist in like the the really high-end Hollywood ecosystem. But no, even in indie filmmaking land, pretty much everything was the same to a certain degree. And then I noticed it in the YouTube world as well. You know, like... Once you get into any sort of corner of YouTube, like I got, I don't know, I watch like personal development videos and like minimalism videos and, um, you know, like productivity and all of these kinds of things. Like once you get into any of these ecosystems and the algorithm starts feeding you more of what's in those ecosystems, you start to notice that it's all the same again and again and again. Like it's a little, it's novel at first, the first few times you encounter it. And then you just get the same damn thing over and over and over. And it's really dispiriting. And so that's what the pattern looks like as a consumer. Vast swaths of the internet being pulled under by these best practices, being homogenized, being, being prone to mediocrity. And I just don't, I just don't know. It, to me, it feels like there's a cancer spreading. Like I know people are capable of good work. I know people have that yearning to do things that are interesting and that are unique, that are original, that are, that are a little bit weird and out there, but they feel compelled to do it. But then we live in these ecosystems that have a certain set of economic incentives. We live in a world where 
we're wired to be mimetic, to desire the things that other people are doing, to play the same games that they're playing. We're wired to want to crave certainty, to crave control. And it just contributes to this, this like snowball rolling down a hill, picking up steam, picking up size as the internet just becomes this big gelatinous blob of sameness. And that's sad as fuck to me. Like it's, it's so, so sad because humanity is as unique and diverse as they're like, I don't know, like everybody is different. Every single person who has ever existed has had a different experience and interpretation of the world. That's crazy when you stop to think about it. But there is something about the internet. There's a set of patterns about how we perceive the world, how we operate, how, what we want that causes this thing that could be amazing. Like the internet could be the most creative, interesting, diverse place. It could help us find people who are like us, who share our weird passions, who, who are really, you know, who, who provide that sense of connection and belonging that so many of us are missing in our lives. But instead, the internet is making it worse. It's not helping us find the others. It's not helping us connect. It's not helping us follow our intuition and lean into our curiosity and consume the things that really light us up and make us feel alive. Again, it's just a giant gelatinous blob of mediocrity everywhere you look. And it breaks my fucking heart. And I will say it's no picnic for the creators either. Like over the last two years, I have met a not insubstantial amount of creators who are ostensibly successful, who are, you know, by all outward appearances, like making a great living and, and living the dream, but they still feel trapped. They're unhappy and they feel like they've built a prison for themselves. And that they can't escape this, this life. And it's, it's sad because everybody joins the quote-unquote creator economy because they're seeking freedom in some capacity. They want to spend their days doing work that matters, connecting with people, and generally living a better, more unrestrained, connective life than they would if they were just working some random nine to five. Like that's the dream, right? But then so many people who come into this ecosystem who want that, they follow the best practices, they do everything they're, they think they're supposed to do, but they end up constructing a prison for themselves that's just as soul-crushing as any day job that preceded it. And like, shit, that's, that's my story, right? Like, I broke away from that filmmaking blog because it was crushing my soul, and I started building my own business. But I did it in a way that was rooted in... in insecurity and uncertainty and, and wanting to know all the right answers. So I used the best practices in my first business, which is called Filmmaker Freedom. I, for years and years and years, did all of the things that I was supposed to do. And it never felt right. I was able to make a pretty okay living with it by the end, but it never felt right. It never felt like I was really living in alignment with my values. It always felt like I was just having to force myself to do this work because it, like I, I knew it wasn't, it wasn't really me. But yeah, for years I did this and for years I forced it. And I, again, I made an okay living. I probably made like 50 to $60,000 a year by the time I was finished. Um, I shut this, I effectively shut this business down in, 2020 after the covid lockdowns and all that like it gave me the time to step back and to reflect and that's sort of what sent me on the path that i'm currently on right now is noticing this pattern of mediocrity this pattern of me getting caught up in in things that make me unhappy and sticking with them even though i feel my soul just crumbling beneath me. And that's what sent me on, on this path that I'm currently on, where the goal is to avoid the pattern. And that's the thing. 
The only thing I know of that breaks the pattern is courage. It takes courage to avoid toxic short-term incentives and instead play long games. Do work that might not pay off immediately, but will build trust and will build affinity with the people that you seek to serve, in the words of Seth Godin. It takes real courage to try doing the creative work that only you can do to like understand yourself and to listen to your in intuition and to take those leaps of faith to show up in a world that is uniquely authentically yourself, even if it looks nothing like the creative work and the ecosystem that surrounds you. That shit is terrifying. And it takes so much courage to break free from all of those marketing best practices that never quite feel right, but we do them anyway because we're insecure and we really want to make money. To, so to operate in a way that is truly kind and generous and non-coercive, where we're going out into the world and finding the others and building relationships with them and creating invitations for them to come into our world, to become fans, to buy our products, to join our experiences, to join our membership, whatever it is, to play that game in a way that is truly friendly and non-coercive, it takes courage. And for years, like I, like I felt that intuition to try these things, but I was too cowardly, right? I was coming from a place of financial insecurity and scarcity. And when I am in that mode, I'm not able to do it. But at this point in my life, like I, like I've just, I don't know, I've seen the pattern too many times and I know, like I have this deep felt sense of knowing that. There is something in me. There is way more potential that I am leaving on the table right now. There is so much I have to say and so much I want to do that if I keep letting the pattern dictate how I live my life, I am going to end up on my deathbed and I am going to be filled with regret. And that's unacceptable to me at this point. So even though it's scary even though it's really uncomfortable and uncertain to try breaking some of these patterns, to break out of mimetic ecosystems, to do work that only I could do, the to, to try to rebuild the philosophy of marketing from like a different set of first principles, like that's so uncertain and so weird and hard and like why the fuck would anybody do that? But I feel called to do it. And... That's the thing. It's like once you make the leap and start playing around, it gets a little bit easier. You start finding the others. You start realizing that it wasn't actually as scary as your brain made it out to be. And that's been kind of an aha moment for me, like a really big realization that the stories we tell about the reason we can't do things are very often just that. They're stories. They're fictions. And... The more I get out of my comfort zone, the more I realize that there were so many fictions holding me back, that life can be just fine when I'm exploring and creating and trying things that are uncertain and weird. That in fact, life gets easier, life gets more joyful and playful and interesting. I start attracting the kind of people that, that see the world the way that I do, that share the same values. And, you know, when you approach it from a place of not trying to force your way through the world, but instead just vibe as what, I, you know, um, you end up making friends, building acquaintances, building networks with people who are really, really just vibing is the only word that I can think of. And like, this is why Ungated exists now is like, I have experienced enough of what happens when you jump out of your comfort zone, when you take those courageous leaps to know that not only is it not the end of the world, not only will your life not fall apart, but there's actually some good there. There's real good there. There's, there's life energy that just feels unlike anything that I ever felt when I was trapped within the pattern. So yeah, that's why Ungated exists. To keep exploring this territory, to sort of keep jumping into things that may not work. And so I can, 
you know, create maps based on what I find and leave those behind for other people who want to walk the same kind of weird, irreverent paths. And yeah, more than anything, I'm bought into this idea that courage is contagious. I'm bought into the idea that sometimes all we need to be able to muster up the the will and the bravery to take our own little leaps of faith is to see someone else do it first. And that's why the, like, the ecosystem exists. That's why I'm working so much in public now with things that might not, you know, might not pan out for me. Because I know that if they do, or if, I, if they lead to opportunities and I'm honest about what's going on, it's going to inspire other people to take little leaps of faith as well. And that's why the community exists. Like I want us to work in public together to constantly share all the interesting, wild, courageous shit that we're trying to build great lives for ourselves, to build our businesses in ways that are maybe unintuitive to others, but feel good for us and feel right. That's the game. And it's the game that I'd like to invite you to play. It's like if you have seen this pattern play out, if you feel the same sense of dread about watching vast corners of the internet get captured by mediocrity, if you feel this deep sense that you have things to say, that you have interesting creative work inside you, that is, that is what Ungated is for. It's a place for, for us to be courageous together to keep playing these games, to break the pattern, to prove that the pattern doesn't have to dictate every facet of our creative lives and our economic lives. We can build something better. So that's my message. That's my manifesto. Hope you dig it.